Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Today, we are going to be discussing how to improve your site's metrics with lazy loading. All right, to get started, we'll introduce ourselves. Hi, I am Nicole. I sit with the Google News Initiative on the News Consumer Insights team. Christian? Uh, thank you, Nicole. Hey there, everyone. I'm, I'm Christian, and I am a technical expert uh, from the Google Technical Services team. Awesome. So just to give you a little bit of background as to what the News Consumer Insights team is, we essentially created data tools such as News Consumer Insights specifically for news publishers to better understand and comprehend their data. So while working on these tools, we hear feedback from time to time to further demystify some of the technical recommendations that we offer, which is why we're here today. As mentioned in the beginning, we are going to be here to discuss lazy loading. So today, a little bit about what we're going to be doing. I, Nicole, will be playing the role of a publisher, given the common questions that we have been asked before to essentially guide you through implementing lazy loading. And thankfully, or more importantly, we also have Christian here to be the technical expert to show us exactly how to go into lazy loading and code it. So there are three things that we will make sure to cover in this scenario as we go through. One, what is lazy loading? Two, the effects that it will have on your site experience and ad manager metrics. And then three, again, most importantly, the code demo of how to implement it via the Google publisher tags. So we're going to get started in our discussion here. <laughs> All right, so hi, I'm Nicole. I'm here from the News Consumer Insights team at Google, acting as a publisher that has a new site called NCI. Uh, hey, Nicole, I'm Christian from the technical services team at Google. And I am a technical consultant uh, here to help NCI answer these questions, playing myself. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, so essentially, we're struggling with a few different issues here at our publication. And I've heard that lazy loading might be beneficial and able to help solve them. Would you be able to confirm that for me? Sure. But before we jump into a solution, can you tell me a bit more about the specific issues that you're experiencing? Makes sense. So essentially, currently our site takes a while to initially load, which is really impacting our page speed. Our viewability feels pretty low. It's generally under 50%. Um, and we're concerned about you know, our CPMs, of course. And also we're looking to do anything that can improve reader experience and engagement on our site. So from what I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but lazy loading can affect our ad timing or those issues that I mentioned above. Yeah, you're spot on, Nicole. Uh, so to go over, lazy loading is essentially delaying your ad requests until the part of the web page that shows the ad is on the user's screen, or at least close to the user's screen. Uh, this cuts down on requesting ads that likely would not be seen by the end user. Okay, got it. So this will essentially help with the things that I mentioned earlier. Uh, in terms of viewability, let's remember that that metric is based off users browsing behavior. So it's, you know, how long are they on your, are they seeing an ad over a certain period of time, mm -hmm. uh, which is to some extent not in our control. We can't uh, mind control people to look at your ads. Mm -hmm. However, I can say that in practice, we do see that lazy loading does improve your viewability metrics. Okay. CPMs are hard to predict because they are based on factors beyond just viewability. So things like seasonality, audience bidding algorithms, inventory quality, competing direct campaigns, et cetera. Higher viewability will definitely not hurt your CPMs and hopefully help, but I would not want to guarantee some massive increase in CPM with a viewability increase. Makes sense. And lastly, in regards to page speed and reader engagement, lazy loading will definitely um, improve the metrics in both these areas or the perceived uh, user experience in both these areas. Awesome. Okay. That's all super useful information, especially going through each of those for me. So essentially, I guess my next question are, are there any other trade-offs to expect or in, in other things that I should keep in mind if I decide to implement lazy loading on my site? Sure. So going back to what I just explained, uh, with lazy loading, you'll be waiting for ad slots to be in view. So almost by default, it's going to result in requesting a lot less overall ads than before. So you should expect a decrease in total impressions and total ad requests. As a result of that, it's important to keep overall revenue in mind. Uh, these units are hopefully with increased viewability, 
these units should therefore garner a higher premium in direct sales to account for any potential dips in ad quantity. Also, advertisers that buy based on viewability should want to work with NCI more uh, once you actually implement the lazy loading. Uh, so that should help offset um, any decrease in quantity of ads. Oh. Okay, no, that completely makes sense. Um, so I guess, how do we essentially get started on implementing lazy loading if all of that sounds good and we're ready to move forward? Of course, it sounds great. Um, let me ask you a question before we jump into it. Uh, are you using a CMS solution uh, such as WordPress or, or even more so, can you tell me a bit more about how your Google Publisher tags are deployed? Yeah, I guess for me to better understand kind of these questions is like how exactly are um, is WordPress imp like related to lazy loading or, or GPT? Sure. Uh, well, it matters because based on how your tags are deployed, you may be able to leverage features that make it easy to implement lazy loading. For example, I've seen publishers that use a CMS like WordPress, as you mentioned, with plugins. It was easy as turning on a simple setting like a chat box. Or... If you are implementing the tags yourself, uh, you may have to update your Google Publisher tags. I'll refer to them as GPT uh, from now on, as you did, uh, on your pages to set them up to do lazy loading uh, you know, in JavaScript. Oh, OK, of course. Um, OK, so I am going to be implementing this more in-house. Um, so we're going to need to understand how to set this up via the Google Publisher tags, um, or GPT, as we've been calling them. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, makes sense. Uh, do you want me to go over that with you? I would absolutely love that. Would you mind sharing your screen and walk me through, like, start to finish, how to essentially like put lazy loading on my site? For sure. Uh, let me know when you can see my screen. I can. Awesome. So before we jump into any code, uh, I just want to quickly um, give a shout out to the developers.google.com page, uh, mm -hmm. specifically as it relates to the Google Publisher tag. Uh, on this page at the top, you'll see uh, our sample section. Uh, in this section, we do have an example that actually shows um, a, a implementation of lazy loading. Uh, so what I'm going to go into today as we go over the different ways that we can implement lazy loading is going to be based off this code as a foundation. So if at any point you feel like uh, you, know, you want to try this yourself, just mm -hmm. go to developers.google.com, publish your okay. tags, click sample. And you can see the code right here. With that said, would you like me to actually go into, you know, actually showing you what's going on here? Yes, please. I'd love that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's head over to my desktop. Um, I've actually built two examples for us to go over today. So first, we'll go into this. I'll open this with Chrome. So pretend this is uh, NCI's lovely uh, website. It's a okay. simplified <laughs> version, but it should uh, it should help. Uh, explain what we're showing here. Yes. So at the top, you can see that ad slots are being fetched and rendered uh, both ad slot one and two. So there's one here and one down here. That's a okay. cat right now that shows. <laughs> um, and you can see uh, it's happening as I re come to the page. So mm -hmm. as of right now, I would consider this page to not be doing a lazy loading. Uh, remember that what we're seeing right here is this ad slot right here. It's, it's being requested and rendered and, right. you know, it's, again, going back to our theory, um, our, public, our, our user could go to our page, click an article mm -hmm. right here, and never actually view the ad slot under. So I guess that begs the question, how do we start implementing? Uh, here we'll get into some code, but not too intensely. Uh, so this is the, uh, the version of our site that you're looking at right now. Before. Okay. So um, just to go over quickly some kind of, uh, you know, kind of standard foundational elements. This is just defining our ad slots. Um, this would be done for you already. Um, mm -hmm. As you can see, we have an ad unit and some key values and the size and the okay, div ID. Yeah. Right. Um, don't worry too much about this. Also down here, you'll see we have the slots defined. Uh, if, as I assume there are ads on your page already, um, whether it's been yourself or some other developer, um, has mm -hmm. implemented this already, so don't worry. Instead, what I want to um, call out here is the grayed out sections of code. Okay. So uh, I'm going to ungray out one section right here. Mm -hmm. And this is our enable lazy load function, which uh, I guess it's hopefully by the name suggests it should you know, imply what's about to happen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page and you can see that now 
we have an ad slot that's being fetched and rendered, yeah. but the, the one below is not. Um, so, you know, and as we scroll, okay, we can see that it's now being rendered and it's actually, you know, responding in some way or form to our, our user behavior. Um, so this is a start. Um, this method, uh, which you can actually read more about right here, uh, again, on our developers at google.com page, this method by default will, will enable lazy loading uh, for the slots on your page. However, um, something that maybe you noticed as well, uh, when we do scroll down, it's fetching not really close to when we actually- right. uh, like not yes. actually down at the bottom of the page. Exactly. And even when it's rendering, it's uh, not, um, it's rendering still when the ad's out of view, which you may want that. Um, so I, I bring up this, uh, this uh, reference page here because there are three values that can be passed into this function, mm -hmm. the fetch margin percent, the render margin percent and mobile scaling, which basically accounts for um, if this is being done on mobile. And what this essentially does, it tells uh, GPT uh, what, at what, kind of distances from the ad slots you want lazy loading to um, occur. Oh, okay. Exactly. So um, what I'll do here in our code is just mess around with it a little bit um, and turn on that function here. And we'll actually make it so that we will do this within as little or hopefully a, a closer timing window. Okay. So I'll go up here. And now, as you can see. Oh, I uh, see. Okay. Yeah. As you're scrolling down, it still hasn't fetched. Exactly. It hasn't fetched, but now once we're a lot closer, it's fetching mm -hmm. and we actually set the render margin percent to be zero. So in right. theory, it's not going to render until the slots on the page. Um, so this is one kind of uh, broad brush way of implementing lazy loading. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, and this is probably leading to uh, our second example. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you may notice is that this turns it on for all slots on the page. So for example, if I'm refreshing the page and you know, this top one is lazy loading in the same way and this one is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, this may be what you want to do, but there's another way to do it whereby you can actually control uh, which slots you want to lazy load. Uh, uh, so does that sound like something you'd like me to go over really quickly? Yeah, it just sounds like it might be a better way to tailor the lazy loading essentially. Awesome. Okay, so let's uh, point ourselves to our second example. So here we go. So this again is your a very engaging website um, over the green screen. Yes. But um, you know, just assume this is your content. And as you scroll down, uh, there's a slot here that can't be seen um, that we want essentially to say, hey, okay, when we're down here, mm -hmm. um, let's show it. Okay. So the kind of paradigm that we're going to go with here um, is based off of event-based ad requests. Oh. So the concept is, is is essentially that you would like to um, load the ad based on something happening, right? Mm -hmm. So in this example right now, um, it's going to be based on us clicking this button, which is, again, going back to the GPT uh, sample page. This is literally the example that you can get to the starting point by going to developers.google.com and okay. going to samples and grabbing this code. However, uh, our goal, since we're doing lazy loading, is to have this happen based off of us scrolling down here. So let me show you how you can do that. So we'll go here. Okay. Um, so here is the, the code right here. Um, mm -hmm. Again, right now what's happening is that essentially on, on click, we're going to be clicking this um, we're going to be triggering this Google pub ads refresh function. Okay. So before I go into that, um, again, you can see that we defined our slot up here. We have our ad slot, the same thing. Okay. But the most critical thing here is that we've turned on, turned off what's called disable initial load. What that essentially means is that when you, when the page is um, loaded, mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to actually um, have ad slots be rendered. We're going to say, okay, allow you as a publisher to control when you want to show your okay. particular ad slots. That makes more sense. Okay. Right. And that trigger is based off of this refresh function. So when I click this button, 
I show my ad, uh, which is great. But for the purposes of lazy loading, uh, we actually want to have that happen when the ad is on screen. So mm -hmm. what I just made live here uh, yeah. is uh, a bit of JavaScript. And again, you mm -hmm. can implement this based on whatever whatever way you, you wish to do. Um, within JavaScript, there are ways to figure out when a certain piece of the, uh, the DOM or the web page is on screen. Mm -hmm. So all that's happening right here is this is essentially saying, hey, when the ad slot is on screen, call refresh. Okay. Um, this is the most important thing. The rest, you know, don't worry too much about. It. Okay. So again, what we'll do just to show you for the example, mm -hmm. we're on the page and now the ad showing. Fantastic. Right? Yes. Fantastic. And I didn't have to click the refresh button. So right. um, these are, you know, while very basic um, examples, they should kind of hopefully get the, um, first, it should show you that it's not the hardest thing in the world um, to implement lazy loading yourself. Right. And uh, so the tools are there. And then two, um, you know, there are many different, I guess, ways you can bake that cake, right? You can do it with the built-in functionality in GPT, mm -hmm. enable lazy load, versus you can kind of do it in a bit more of a tailored way, as the word you described, where you can kind of mix GPT with your um, side events and have ads be load, loaded on, right. on those triggers. No, that was super useful. Is there any other like little pieces I should keep in mind or we're good? Uh, I mean, I think we're great. Of course, you know, please uh, don't be afraid of uh, going to the um, developers.google.com page. Yeah. Uh, it has all this information there. Um, you can read everything about it. And in the worst case, you know, um, you know, as a publisher, you can always reach out uh, to your Google teams if you need. Absolutely. No, that is incredibly useful, Christian. I think that after I work on NCI a bit, then we'll get uh, up to speed on lazy loading, but I appreciate you walking through not only necessarily using Google Publisher tag, but explaining that, of course, if someone's using another type of CMS, such as WordPress, that there is something that could help them there within that. But then walking us through the actual tagging piece, as I told you, we're in-house and we use GPT tags. Um, and then I like the walkthrough of just regular lazy loading and then also talking about how we can do more event-based lazy loading. So once again, thank you so much, Christian. If you have any questions, you can reach out to your Google team. But thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. And we wish you the best of luck on implementing lazy loading. Take care. Bye.